Welcome back, my fellow radiation nerds. Today, we'll take a closer look at the radioactive contamination inside of my lead pick container and try to identify the isotope behind it. Lead picks are lead containers used to store highly radioactive sources and shield their radiation to help minimize exposure. This one in particular originally came from one of the German nuclear power plants and it is made out of solid lead and weighs about 2 kilograms. Although the container did not come with any radioactive sources, after unboxing the package I noticed that the inside of the container emitted radioactivity and was most likely contaminated with some mysterious radioactive source. This discovery was very exciting and I was very curious to find out what isotope was behind the contamination. There are plenty of different radioactive isotopes out there. Some of them are natural, such as uranium, thorium and their decay products, and some of them are man-made, produced in nuclear reactors, particle accelerators or during atomic tests. In order to find out what isotope is behind the contamination, I need to narrow down my search and eliminate any isotopes that don't match the characteristics and properties of the one inside of the lead pig. I'll start by checking what type of radiation is being emitted from the container. First, I'm going to take a measurement without any shielding, and then I'll start introducing different materials to block out different types of radiation and compare the results. For this purpose, I will use my Ludlum Model 3 with a 44-9 probe, as it can easily detect alpha, beta and gamma radiation. Alpha particles can travel in air up to 5 cm and can be easily stopped with a thicker piece of paper. Beta particles can travel in air up to half a meter and can go through low-density materials, but a piece of aluminum should be enough to block them. Gamma rays can travel very long distances, and they are the hardest to shield, requiring very dense materials such as lead or even sometimes uranium. From my first measurement without any shielding, I got a result of about 1000 counts per minute at 1 cm distance. After placing a piece of paper between the probe and the container, the result remained unchanged. This meant that there are pretty much no alphas being emitted by the source. Next, I've added a piece of aluminum and the readings dropped significantly, all the way back to background levels, meaning that the source was a primarily beta emitter and even if there was some gamma radiation, it was extremely low and not detectable by my meter. Although I haven't detected any gamma radiation above background levels, I still decided to run gamma spectroscopy with my RACID. Sometimes even a trace amount of gamma radiation is enough to build a good gamma spectrum and identify different isotopes. Inside of my lead castle, the background activity is only 1.2 counts per second when measured with my RACID gamma spectrometer. After replacing the lead pick container inside of my lead castle, I got a reading of 3.5 counts per second, and after collecting data for a couple of hours, I've managed to create a gamma spectrum of the lead pick. The gamma spectroscopy revealed peaks that are characteristic for uranium ore. I spoke with the previous owner and he did mention that he stored uranium ore inside, so there's definitely a big chance that a small piece of the mineral broke off and now sits at the bottom of the container. However, the amount of beta radiation compared to gamma could hint at another contaminant, but unfortunately I don't have the tools to properly check or identify it. This is actually not the first time I see a contaminated lab equipment. A friend of mine has a lead pig that is contaminated with radioactive cesium-137 as a result of a chemical spill inside of it. I wanna hear from you. Did you ever find some contaminated lab equipment? And do you think the remains of the uranium ore are the only contaminated inside of my lead pig or could there be something more to it? I'm looking forward to hearing your suggestions and answers in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If yes, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to my channel so you don't miss any of the upcoming content. Also feel free to check out my coffee page where you can donate a nice cup of radioactive coffee and support my work financially. And remember, stay active!